everyone and welcome to our service this afternoon, a service of celebration. Um, the Lord's bringing Second Reformed Church into the fellowship of the Evangelical Free Church and, uh, and how he did that. I want to welcome each and all. Welcome our um, Evangelical Free brothers and sisters uh, to our service. Um, special welcome to the pastors uh, who will be sharing a word or prayer in a little while. Um, also want to express a word of thanks to our crew here for all the preparations that have been made and, uh, and just um, the opportunity to celebrate the Lord's goodness to us. I'd like to read our call to worship this afternoon, actually continue our call to worship with the, with the choir leading out at first. Um, and this is from Psalm 126. Every year at Second Reformed Church, at least in recent, recent times, we have chosen a theme verse for the year. Um, the present one is, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. That's from the Exodus chapter 15 and verse 2. The one we've chosen for 2022 is very fitting for what we have tonight, and that's Psalm 126. When the Lord uh, sent his people out of the captivity in Babylon, and they brought them back into the promised land, and the word came from Cyrus encouraging the people to return uh, to their own land. And um, this was one of the songs they sang. And uh, verse 3 is the one that we've chosen for our 2022 verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. And when we consider the history of our congregation, looking over that long history, um, the Lord indeed has done great things for us, and we are glad. And this recent chapter of the Lord's mercies and guidance bringing us into the uh, Evangelical Free Church is part of those great things that he's done, and we are glad. Amen. Well, if you hear a whistle back there, it's not the grandchild who I thought it was that playing it. So, <laughs> um, I've been asked to give a bit of a history of how we have come to this place. But before I do that, I want to just give special thanks to you, Carrie Doyle, for all of your ministry and help to us through these many months. Um, he is a paraclete. That's different than a parakeet. Um, Paraclete is someone who comes alongside and helps, and uh, you were that way from the very beginning. And uh, we thank God for you and for your help, all your help, and for your help this weekend as well. I also want to uh, thank Pastor Matt. Um, he will be giving us um, the charge, if you will, of our responsibility in a little bit. Um, but we had to submit a constitution and also bylaws to him, and he faithfully went through them very thoroughly. Um, we make fun of him, but we are. it needed to be done. And you put in all the time, and you made the suggestions, and we're grateful. Um, there's a difference with someone critiquing that wants you to succeed and someone criticizing to tear you down. He was critiquing because he wanted to help us succeed, and we're grateful for that. And also for the prayers of all our other uh, EFCA brothers and sisters um, with this. Also a word of thanks to our consistory and, um, and committee and all the folks who have been praying. Um, this is not the conclusion, but a celebration of a change in our journey. Um, for some 20 years, perhaps 25 years, we had been watching the Reformed Church in America, our then denomination, um, because there were developments that were disturbing. Um, there have been for years. Um, some of the presenting aspects were the uh, desire for in inclusion of homosexuals 
in every aspect of ministry and life uh, in the church. Um, another aspect was buying into essentially what was critical race theory and also um, a growing unbiblical form of um, seeking to support the work of a denomination by taxing the churches. Um, and underlying all of that was, um, we concluded, a different set of principles of interpretation that had crept into the denomination. Um, the, the scripture was not, had not been looked at in the way that you know, our forefathers did and which we did um, as evangelicals, um, letting scripture interpret scripture because it is its own interpreter and not bringing interpretations from outside in order to justify certain um, behaviors and practices. It got more and more evident that um, we needed to start looking for a different denomination. And we are a mixed multitude here. We're all mixed up. And um, we would not have fit with many of the Presbyterian bodies that required the, the leadership of the church to subscribe to infant baptism. Not everyone here of our leaders can subscribe to that or to the Westminster Confessions or Standards or to the, uh, the three standards of unity, the Heidelberg and so forth and so on. So we needed to find a home that had leeway for our mixed multitude. And we looked at the EFCA, and we also looked at the Evangelical Presbyterians. The Evangelical Presbyterians would have had to bend their rules to let us in. The EFCA, we could live with every one of the statements of faith with no troubles. We also, in comparing, found that the culture of the EFCA was much more like our church. And um, I mean, you've probably felt it here. We're a different denomination now, but not much has changed. And we are amongst people who share the same culture that we do as far as taking the gospel seriously and so forth. Well, the consistory made decision um, and voted that we would pursue this. And so we would bring it to the congregation. And on the 10th of January of this year, we gave an informational meeting of why we thought we should leave the RCA, Reformed Church in America, and why the EFCA was what we thought the most home to us, the best home for us. We had a vote two weeks later, allowed absentee ballots, and the vote was 90 to four to leave. Then we knew that we had the congregation on board and we went to the classes. And in February of this year, we sent a letter to the classes um, and asked them, would they kindly um, transfer us into the EFCA? There is a provision in our book of church order for an orderly uh, transfer. They have to come in and investigate and make sure that's what the congregation really wants and what the consistory really wants. And they did that on May 17th. They were here, no absentee ballots allowed. The congregation voted 60 to zero to leave. Were there any questions, the pastors asked? Crickets. And then the same with consistory when we met up there, were there any questions? No. And the two ministers that handled our case were the two ministers that if we had a choice, they would be the ones that we wanted to handle our case. And the Lord worked that all out. The next day, the classes met in our gym. They hadn't met for months and months because they didn't, you know, the COVID business. And here, you know, you fit 40 people in here, you could pretty well have a laying down meeting if you wanted to. And um, the classes voted unanimously to transfer Second Reformed Church into the EFCA. And um, we did not expect that to happen so quickly. It kind of caught us off guard. Um, but they also commended us to the Lord and prayed over us in our new church home. And I want to say to their credit, 
they have continued to be interested in the life of our church officially, but also with um, other churches asking about what's been going on. So we had to suddenly come up with a constitution and bylaws. For 111 years, we had the Book of Church Order, the Reformed Church Book of Church Order, which served well. And um, now all of a sudden we have to come up with a new constitution and bylaws. And because the Evangelical Free Church is a, a church of congregational government, we had to do some tweaking with uh, some of the, the Book of Church Order. And uh, we uh, submitted to Pastor Matt um, a really, really, really rough draft. Well, we had a deadline. We had to get it in before September 1. And so the poor man there had to deal with, you know, uh, fonts of different sizes and different margins because what we had done was cut and paste. And he went through faithfully and dutifully and picked out, you know, the various errors that we had made, you know, a copyist errors and also uh, made suggestions how things could better be said. That was submitted to the uh, EFCA and on September 21, right, the people in the home office voted to receive Second Reformed Church into the denomination. And so here we are. And um, so praise God for that, for his kindness, and um, just glory to him. And may it be um, the start of a relationship that will see many people saved and many people built up in the faith that is in Christ and a faithful witness um, going forward until Jesus returns. And with that, Brother Kerry, I'm going to turn this over to you. For introductions, I should think, and so forth. Well, it's uh, been a joy to be with you this weekend, our uh, second time being here for a weekend, and uh, our first visit that we uh, were happened to be in the area, and we were reached out to by uh, Don and the group here, and we stopped by and had a meeting in the fellowship hall, and um, and just from the very beginning had the sense of a uh, oneness, and just uh, even as we toured this building and heard about your ministry, um, knew we were in the presence of brothers and sisters with an equal commitment to the gospel and a desire to uh, guard the gospel and share the gospel. And so uh, what a joy it is uh, to uh, be here in this official uh, capacity uh, this afternoon. I do want to introduce uh, and even tell about some of the EFCA pastors and leaders. We have a few of our guys who've been able to be here with us today, so, uh, one with his wife and kids as well. And um, in your bulletin uh, program today, there is a list of the uh, Western New York uh, Free Church pastors. A little bit about the district. Our district goes from as far as Ohio State to Penn State, to put it in college terms. Uh, from Columbus, Ohio to State College, Pennsylvania. We have a church in Maryland, the, the far western panhandle. Our district includes West Virginia. There are currently no churches there now. If you know a, a church planner that would like to uh, help us get something going down there, if you'd like to pray about that, or I shouldn't do this, but if you can work virtually and you want to take a pocket of people with you and go start a church down there, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Don about that later. <clears throat> um, tell a church, that's it. I just did. I told the church. <laughs> it's been a fun weekend, people. <laughs> Pray for poor Judy. She's had it coming and going. Yeah, she can. We, no one needs to ever pray for Judy about these matters. <clears throat> Am I getting too comfortable here? No. <laughs> I told you I felt at home. This is my wife's not here. So again, pray. Um, we have a. Uh, churches in um, western New York. Uh, Pastor Jason Trapeau is in just outside of Buffalo. He sends his greetings. I don't think he was able to be here unless he changed. Stand up, Jason. We'll see you, but I don't think so. <clears throat> Doug and Donna Marshall are up. Uh, they live just outside of Pulaski. He actually pastors two churches and is a teacher's aide. He's tri-vocational. He uh, pastors a free church, Sandy Creek Bible Church, which is um, a newer free church. Uh, had a very similar history to yours that uh, they were in a group that uh, 
Uh, they had not left, the church had not left the gospel, but their denomination had been leaving the gospel for quite a while. And um, so they joined the free church. Pa Pastor Doug and Donna send their greetings. Uh, she is, was sick this last week, and then they had a schedule conflict that he regretted uh, greatly. He could not be here. Um, I'm going to skip down to our other absentee ballots before we uh, uh, introduce. I don't hear Tom and Chaz, so they must not be here. Um, Tom and Charles um, Moratori serve <clears throat> at the well in Rochester, and they are Rochester natives. They are indigenous ministers. They are they are from serving where they are from in a, uh, one of our churches there, and um, and we are very thankful for their ministry. Uh, uh, Pastor Matt uh, actually was able to preach for Pastor Tom this morning, and uh, we met there last night for a pastor's party. Um, Brian Rathbun has a historic connection um, that is just absolutely wonderful. Uh, he was actually on staff here way back in the day, eighteen uh, thirty. What was the, what were the dates on that again, brother? Nineteen eighty-two, and <clears throat> and then left here to go to Trinity. Evangelical Divinity School, our, our seminary, where Jim uh, went to school and went to school with Matt Mitchell. They knew each other there. And, oh, very good. Um, so the Free Church Connections, or Brian's connection here, and then several years ago started talking to someone in this church who were expressing some concerns about uh, the current nature of the RCA. And, and he said, uh, look into the EFCA. So Brian started those conversations and uh, several years ago, and uh, we thank you for your uh, voice and hand and in, in, in suggesting that as well, brother, and uh, good to see you and your beloved uh, here tonight. Uh, Matt Mitchell will be speaking in just a moment. We're glad to have him. He pastors our free church in Lance, PA. He is the head of our Credentials and Constitution Board, and uh, very thankful he helps lead a group of men who um, do fine-tooth constitutions, those kind of things, but more than anything, assist in helping men move into ordinations or licensing. He already is looking forward to connecting with your next pastor if they are not free church ordained. And uh, you've heard of the Hound of Heaven? Um, there's an outpost in Lance, and uh, Matt has the, wears that mantle. He does a wonderful job, doesn't he, Kevin? Uh, he does a wonderful job, I saw Kevin uh, uh, smiling back there, of uh, nudging our guys to get our credential. One of the things that we would hope that you do is encourage your pastor to get a free church credential because then there is accountability as well as support and encouragement along the way. And, uh, and so uh, with that, um, if he were to, God forbid, uh, stray from orthodoxy or in that kind of living, uh, we would be able to come alongside of you as well. We would do that anyway, but be able to come alongside and hopefully restore uh, the brother and, uh, and to instruct him along those ways. And so uh, it is a great uh, uh, approval process and a great training process uh, for them as well. So Matt will be back in touch. This will not be, Lord willing, his last uh, trip up here. And he will be reading that man's paper with the same fervor uh, that happens. Uh, Kevin and Jennifer Martin are here. They are close by as well. Uh, Jim had Jim and his family had connections down there, I believe in Wheaton as well. Uh, Kevin and Jennifer uh, served there. He's been at the church for like 10 years, I think, and uh, was youth pastor for a number of years, and now is the uh, senior pastor. My number's close. Ish. I like ish. And, uh, and just doing a wonderful job of ministering uh, there as well. So uh, later we will have a season of prayer towards the close of the service, and uh, we're going to be inviting these men to come up, and we'll be praying uh, a prayer blessing and a celebration uh, over you. Oh, there is one other free church pastor here I failed to recognize, and that's Don White. And he's now the senior serving pastor probably in the district at 31 years, so he brought some credibility with him, all right? So he may be a rookie to us, but we want to recognize the uh, closest evangelical free church pastor that you have, and that would be uh, your beloved brother, his beloved wife. And we honor them uh, for how they have served here. Uh, we see their stamp of ministry here, 
we see your stamp of ministry in them. And we just thank God for the imprint, the gracious, humble, godly, uh, scripture-loving, uh, bad joke-making uh, brother that he is. No one, uh, no one argued over that. <laughs> 31 years. Very good. I think I'm going to make an introduction, or were you going to do that? Matt Mitchell uh, does serve at the uh, Free Church in Lance. He has, uh, serves on national boards with the Free Church. He helps edit uh, articles that come into the Free Church that are on the national page, uh, functionally our magazine now, our electronic magazine. Uh, Matt actually has written a book called Resisting Gossip. I said, Matt, you should honor them by giving them an autographed copy to present. He said, what a way to, to meet a new church. Here's a book I think you need. It's on resisting gossip. But here we are. <laughs> so it, it is a wonderful book. Actually, there's a series of videos that go with this. I would encourage you to please go online. Uh, you can, uh, I think there's a downloadable study guide as well with this. Uh, it's actually been translated into five languages, five languages now. And, um, and has been a blessing to churches literally now around the world. A very accessible book, very uh, wonderful, necessary book. And um, if we're Jason were here, he'd also bring you a book that he's written. So we want to connect, and this is one of the ways we're doing that. Matt, my friend, please come, and thank you for being a part of this day in many, many ways. And all God's people said, comma. <laughs> if you're on the Constitution board, you know what that's about. <laughs> Well, thank you, Carrie. Uh, dear brothers and sisters of this beloved congregation, thank you for having us here today and making us feel so welcome. We also want you, we also want to welcome you into our association of churches. Welcome. I bring you greetings from Lance Evangelical Free Church, where I pastor in the last 23 and a half years in central Pennsylvania. It's about four hours south of here. And I, I bring with you, I bring with me Joel Michaels, Joel is one of the elders at our church, and he's uh, another one of your brothers and sisters here in the Free Church, and uh, it's been great to get to spend some time with Joel. The Evangelical Free Church of America is pleased to receive you as an autonomous, yet interlocking, interdependent member of our association, so that today we are here to say, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. And by the way, I looked at the uh, cake up there and everything is spelled correctly and the commas are in the right place. So, so we may all eat of that before too long. I have been charged with giving you a charge as you celebrate your reception into our association. And I see it as a great privilege. As the chairman of our Allegheny District Constitutions and Credentials Board, it has been a joy to learn about your congregation and to read your governing documents and to help bring them into full alignment with the EFCA, dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Having read all of your key documents, I think you may find as you transition to us that you will have more freedom than you might have been accustomed to before now, before now that you're part of the evangelical free church. We don't do a lot of telling you what to do. In fact, just remember, as I always do, that Pastor Kerry Doyle is not your boss. Okay. Now, I always say that Pastor Kerry is a lot like the Lord. He loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. All right? But he's not your boss. Now, he will not try to boss you around, but don't let him either. What you will actually find is that Pastor Kerry is your servant and your shepherd, especially the shepherd of your shepherds. He is my shepherd. So enjoy your new freedom. But one thing that you are not free to do as a part of the Evangelical Free Church of America, is to abandon, ignore, or in any way lose sight of the evangel, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are evangelicals in the classic theological meaning of the term, Christians centered on the evangel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So that's the substance of my charge to you today. At our church, and Brian, you've been to our church before, we have a saying. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is the gospel. 
That was true for the Apostle Paul. I want to direct your attention to his words in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, which says, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul was writing to the church of God at Corinth, and he was reminding them how single-minded he had been when he had first visited them. He had made a resolution. Just a few more weeks, and we'll all be making New Year's resolutions. He had made a resolution to know nothing. To know nothing except for one thing, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, I don't think that he meant to know nothing in an absolute sense. Paul was talking about his preaching, his teaching, the focus of his ministry. And he was saying that the focus of his ministry was the person and work of Jesus Christ. He wasn't saying that he never talked about anything else. How's the weather, Paul? Jesus Christ and him crucified. How do you think the bills are going to do this year? Jesus Christ and him crucified. I don't think that's what he was saying. He was talking about the center of his life and ministry. The, the one thing, the main thing, the central thing about how everything revolves around Jesus Christ. And it wasn't a new resolution for him either. It's not like this was something that knew that Paul was trying in Corinth that he hadn't done everywhere else. Just like it isn't new for Second Reformed Church. The gospel has been the focus of, I call you 2RC. Do you call yourselves SRC or, okay, I call you 2RC. Okay, you're both. All right, I call you 2RC in my mind. The gospel has been the focus of 2RC for, what did you say, 111 years. It's one of the chief reasons why you are affiliating with us today, because you see an affinity for gospel centrality. Paul is just reminding them that he was absolutely committed to it. This was the root at the bottom of everything that he was and did. If you didn't get this about him, you didn't get him. This was the main thing. And the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Which was the opposite of what the world was saying. It was the opposite of what they all expected. Listen again to verse 1. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. See, that's how everybody else rolled. That's how everybody else did it. They came with eloquence and worldly sophistication. They came as professors and pundits. They came as skillful speakers and philosophers. They came, in other words, in their own power and in their own persuasive abilities. Paul says, I didn't come from a position of worldly strength and worldly wisdom when I came to share the good news about God. I just talked about Jesus. And I talked about how he was killed. In fact, our world thinks that that's crazy. Cray-cray, as the kids said 10 years ago, right? That's not how we talk today, right? No. Paul says that the world thinks that the gospel is, his word for it, foolishness. It's foolish to focus on the message of the cross. That's what the world thinks. That's ridiculous. Now, if the gospel's not true, then they're right. We are wasting our time here this afternoon. But if it is true, then it's wiser than man's wisdom and stronger than man's strength. I believe the world should think that this church is just a little bit crazy, too. We want the world to admire us and think well of us as Christians. Live in such a way that the world sits up and takes notice. Sure. But Paul says that we will actually be despised and laughed at for what we center our lives around. The world may respect our love and service, if we're loving servants, but if they're paying any attention, they will probably think that we're at least a little bit crazy. Because if we are fools, we are to be fools for Christ. If we're to be seen as crazy, let us be crazy for Christ. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So here is my two-pronged charge for you today as the newest EFCA church in the awesome Allegheny District. Number one, 2RC, resolve to know Jesus Christ. Resolve to know Jesus Christ. He is the most compelling person in all of history. He's the most compelling person in the whole universe. Resolve to know him better and more. Read your Bibles. 
Read the Gospels. Get to know Jesus. I wonder, have you read the book Gentle and Lowly? A number of people have read that in the last two years by Dane Ortland. His dad was one of our profs at, uh, at Trinity. Gentle and Lowly is a wonderful reminder of the heart of Jesus. I highly recommend it. Buy two and give one away this Christmas. Whatever you do as a church, resolve to know nothing except Jesus Christ. That is to say, how everything relates to Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean we're not supposed to know other things. It means that we have to know how everything relates to him. That's what all of our songs were about this afternoon. Everything this church should, does should relate to your resolution to know Jesus Christ. To make knowing him the main thing. He is so worth knowing. He is, as your choir sang, indescribably good. Resolve to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. To RC, that's part number two. Resolve to know Jesus Christ crucified. Because if you don't know him through his crucifixion, you don't really know him. See, we like him at Christmas, you know, the baby and the manger, and it's so nice and warm and all that. We've got to get to the cross. Because it's not just who Jesus is, but what Jesus did that is so amazing and so indescribably important. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And the world thinks that's crazy. Paul said in the previous chapter, chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We don't understand Jesus unless we understand his crucifixion. He was changing everything. He was solving everything. He was saving us. He was reconciling us to God. He was taking our place. He was paying our debt. In the EFCA, we don't believe that Jesus was just a great teacher or a moral example. In the EFCA, we don't believe that Jesus was just a great prophet or a spokes spokesman for God. In the EFCA, we don't even believe that Jesus was just God in the flesh, which I, that's a hard sentence to say, just God in the flesh. We believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh to die in the flesh in our place. The incarnation that we celebrate at Christmas was also for the purpose of the crucifixion that we remember on Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday and at the table of our Lord's Supper. And we believe that there's nothing else more worthy of knowing. Resolve to know Jesus Christ crucified. Because that's the evangel. That's the gospel we're called to share with the world and with our local communities. I love your slogan here, reflecting the light of Christ to our community. Carrie has brought me one of your mugs. I've got it sitting on my desk in my office when I pray for you. My charge to you, TRC, to RC, is as a vital part of the EFCA. Keep it up. Keep your focus, uh, your church's focus on the evangel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Amen? Thank you. And again, welcome to the EFCA. I get to give an exhortation. I will try to be as brief as possible. I just got one verse for you. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? I thought, that's a great verse. I'm going to do it again. In fact, if you have your bulletin there, your program, could you read that with me out loud together? It's uh, just uh, thir page three, I guess that would be. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Paul has written a long chapter about the confidence we can have in the resurrection of Jesus. 
if Jesus is dead, we're the, some of the, we're the biggest idiots on the block, on a big block. Um, we're wasting our time, you're wasting your life, you're wasting, you're wasting your talents. If Jesus is dead, there's just no point in this, but he is alive. He died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried according to the scriptures. He was raised from the dead. He was seen by hundreds of people. Some of who were still alive when Paul wrote this. In other words, go ask them. If you don't believe me, there's hundreds you could ask. He said, so we have this confidence that he is alive. We have a dogged confidence in the resurrection of Jesus because otherwise we're men and women to be pitied. We are fools. But we have this confidence that we will have life again as well. And because of that, Paul can write this verse that let's read together. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The gospel gives us a confidence because Jesus has been raised, that we too will be raised someday, and that lives spent for him are not wasted. Whatever you do in serving the Lord is not a waste, even if there's never a reward or acknowledgement here. God is not unjust. He sees your work for him, and he rewards it. So because the gospel gives us his dogged confidence, we should, you should, my brothers and sisters, in this corner where God has placed you, keep serving him by serving other people. Those who know him, help them to grow to know him more. Those who don't, help them to come to know him better and better that they'd want to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Keep working for him. It matters. So first it begins with being steadfast. Steadfast. This is settled in on the gospel. Not, not of two minds, but trusting, believing that God has, in fact, sent his son. He died in our place. He was raised from the dead. He was seen by hundreds. He ascended to the right hand of God. He, set, he has sat down beside God, not because he was tired, but because his work was done. And until that day he comes back, whoever puts their faith in him, he gives them, he takes them from the domain of darkness, puts them in the kingdom of the beloved son, makes them his son, their daughter. And we're his. Don't waver in the gospel. We Matt has charges in that regard as well. And I would remind you that be settled in serving God in this gospel, steadfast. And then be immovable. You've made this decision for Jesus, and now you're immovable. You stand firm in it. As the cultural forces put more and more weight upon you to go away from the gospel, to compromise, to uh, shift from the things that are true, to re-see the scriptures because we had this more lofty, educated view with uh, chronological snobbery, as C.S. Lewis called it. No, no, no. We have, we're steadfast in it, and now we want to be immovable in the gospel. And so that means fighting for focus. There's a lot of stuff. Have you ever had kids, and you've ever had glasses on, and you've had kids? At some point, you know, you get these smudge marks. You can almost you know, hardly see if you've ever experienced, you know, they, they grab for your glasses, and they just, it's just not pretty. We need to fight for focus because there's a lot in this world that will grab for our glasses and blur our vision on the centrality of the things that are Jesus Christ and him crucified. Fight for focus. Fight against distraction. The world will want to choke it out. Persecution wants to beat you down. Jesus wants to keep you close. Walk with him. Because the gospel gives us a dogged confidence that the reality, the truth of the resurrection of Jesus, keep working for him, steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in serving him. Always abounding in serving him. Always on duty. Always faithful. Overflowing. Not spare change ministry. Not just when you can kind of serving. A commitment to giving, expending your life. Your life would be spilled out as an offering to him. Now, I, I think the football analogy serves pretty well for uh, ministry. There's an offense and there's a defense. And there's a time where the offense comes off the field and they get some Gatorade, they get some oxygen, they rest, they recalibrate their plan, they look at the screen, they figure out what they're going to do again while the other side is on their team doing their half. There's all, there is a time to get off the field and rest, but it's not to go up to the grandstands and move to the parking lot. It's to stay in the area of the arena. Thank you, Theodore Roosevelt. Stay there in the arena 
maybe resting so you can get back into the game and serve. There is a place, there is a time for a Sabbath, a break and a rest, but not to avoid it, but to prepare for it. Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in serving him. I said that we're to have a dogged confidence in the gospel. Let me tell you why I said that. If you've ever owned a dog, you know there's a difference between the command stay or sit, stay, and sick them. I want you to have a dogged confidence in the gospel to where you say, that's the gospel, sit. You know, I'm going to sit right there. And then squirrels. And then life and treats and cats and the world and, and temptation and our own flesh. So we not only need to hear the Lord remind us, sit, stay, and then there's a time that you say to that dog, sick him, go do it, right? Uh, we were over at uh, Denise and David's. I get the names right? Oh, my, what a meal. I mean, what wonderful, gracious people they are, and, uh, uh, and they are, and what a phenomenal meal. As good as it was, it was just as sweet to be around their dog, Jet. Uh, some sort of a, a collie, they've got lambs, and this, this, guy, this is a herding dog. A couple of them spread out in another, dog, uh, another room, and he was there to try to swoop us back in. You know, if you ever trained a dog, though, you, you know, you want to make sure they, they learn that, those commands. I just want to remind you, please don't be offended. I'm not calling you dogs. I love dogs. This is the highest compliment I can almost give you here. My brothers and sisters, be steadfast. Be immovable. Be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing your labor in the Lord, not in vain. Amen? And we pledge to labor together with you side by side for the glory of God. And it's an honor to do that. And we want to labor with you now in prayer. And I want to invite those uh, free church pastors. And Joel, I meant to mention you earlier. My apologies, my brother. Uh, I'd like for you to join us as well. So the free church pastors that are, are here today, and remember, Don, that includes you now. Uh, we'd like for you to come up, and we'd like to pray over you. And I've asked Brian if he would close this time of prayer. He has a historically unique, wonderful uh, relationship with you. And uh, I call him the dean of the area churches that I have up here. And I thank God for the resource he is for, for Kevin and other guys as well. And so I thank God that he's a, a connection and a resource as well. Start the mic there and move it down. All right, let us pray. Lord God, we give you praise. We give you honor because you are in this place, you are in our hearts, you have saved us, you have redeemed us for your purposes, for your glory. And we commend this church to you, and we thank you for it. We thank you for their faithful witness to the gospel and their affirmation of the core truths in Jesus Christ. And God, we ask your blessing upon this people. Um, we ask that you would inspire their hearts to draw deeply, to draw deeply near to your presence. God, that they might fix their eyes on you as Carrie just charged, that they might be steadfast and immovable, abounding in your work, serving you, focusing on your kingdom, on what you call them. So God, we ask that your spirit would move powerfully among every person who is connected to this church. We know that you're a God who hears our prayers. We know that you're a God that is, is constantly working through your people. And so we ask that you would do this work for the glory of your name, for the furthering of your kingdom here in Marion and in the surrounding community. We ask this in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we lift up this church, the Second Reformed. And as they turn this chapter and, and move into a new chapter, we ask for your blessing on them. Well, just beautiful facilities, what you've given them already, and beautiful people. And we just lift them up to you. 
that uh, that the focus would be on you and they move forward and uh, always looking to you for the answers and the directions to go. And we just lift them up this morning and we're just so thankful for them and we thank you uh, for bringing us uh, to them and uh, being able to meet them and, and bring them into the fold of the EFCA and so we just thank you for that. And uh, we just pray, once again, pray blessings on them in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, for this exciting season that they are in and finding the next shepherd. And we commend them to you in this process. Thank you for candidates and names that has become tangible for them as they start even interviewing in this week. Give them wisdom, discretion, discernment. And we pray and trust you for that right match, for that right man that would come and serve in this place and this time. In Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father, for your faithfulness through all the generations here. Lord, we pray that you will help us to take to heart the words that we've heard, that we would know nothing among us here but Jesus Christ and him crucified, that he would be lifted up and loved and served, and that you would help us, Lord, in the midst of challenging times to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know, and we pray you'll help us to remember that our work, your work in us and through us, is not in vain in the Lord. When there are high times like we've had this weekend, oftentimes there are valleys shortly thereafter, and the evil one is going to try to steal our joy. And uh, so we pray, Lord, Help us to soldier on faithfully. And Lord, following you, giving you the praise and the glory and holding forth the word of life as well as holding it fast. In Jesus' name. Lord, I agree with my brothers here. I pray for 2RC. I, I thank you for interlocking them with us, for knitting us together uh, as one great big family, part of a greater family, the house of the Lord, as we sang this afternoon. Thank you, Father, for this, this church family. I pray for blessing on them. I pray that they would sing with shouts of joy in the coming year as an EFCA church. I pray that as they go out with seed to sow, crying as they go, that they would come back with shouts of joy, bringing with them the sheaves. Lord, please bring gospel blessing on this church family in the years to come. Father, amen to all that has been prayed here. I, uh, I want to thank you personally for this church and the place that they played in my and Jeannie's life. They took in this young man and his wife, and they loved us and supported us, and they gave us the chance to do ministry here and to preach here for the very first time. Um, you can forgive them, Lord. They should have been more discerning. <laughs> but I am so grateful for them. I'm so grateful to be back among them at such a pivotal time in their history. And I pray your blessing upon them. May their faith, which has been staunch over the years, May their commitment to your gospel, which has been unwavering, may their love for people and their desire to see them reached for Christ be blessed in every way as they move forward into the future. Thank you for their inclusion now in the EFCA. I pray that you'll bless that union and use that union, Father, to bless and encourage them as a church. I, again, I thank you for them, and I thank you for leading me here, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this union with the EFCA that you have put together. Again, bless them to the sake of the gospel, I pray. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen. receive God's parting blessing. Now the God of the God of peace
who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen.